Jason Lewis and Jacob Martin, uh, working with the Observational Astrophysics Group this summer, along with my mentor, Elena Henry, and my faculty advisor, Crystal Martin. So my uh, research project is about an uh, epoch in the history of the universe known as reionization. Uh, this occurred about 12.7 billion years ago, as you can see from this chart, which is uh, outlines the uh, big uh, history of the universe according to the Big Bang Theory. Um, epoch of reionization was marked by the formation of the first stars and galaxies. Um, and it's called the epoch of reionization because that's when uh, all the neutral hydrogen in the universe uh, became ionized for the first time after the uh, Big Bang uh, cooled. So um, the uh, goal of my research project is to determine how the hydrogen gas between galaxies called the intergalactic medium became ionized. Um, uh, we, uh, we suspect that it was ionized by uh, high energy ultraviolet radiation emitted from uh, galaxies formed at that time. But, um, but uh, due to the extremely faint nature of these galaxies, um, it's hard to make observations to confirm this. So uh, what my group did before I uh, joined for the summer is they uh, used a technique known as a, uh, a, a, spectro a spectrographic sky survey in which they looked uh, not for the uh, continuum radiation as a uh, kind of a normal imaging survey would, like you would see from Hubble or something, um, but looked instead for a sharp spike in the uh, in the uh, continuum emission. And so, uh, spectrographic surveys, however, do have a few uh, disadvantages. Uh, one is that they can't cover a very large uh, portion of the sky at once, and the other is that they're uh, that they're uh, interfered with heavily by emissions from our atmosphere. So, in order to counteract this, uh, at least second, um, my group chose a uh, window of wavelengths um, without too much atmosphere emission. Here's the uh, this is a spectrum of the night sky, um, and there's a gap here due to the uh, quantum mechanics of how uh, molecules in the atmosphere emit light. Uh, this is all uh, OH or hydroxyl emissions. Um, so then to solve the other problem, uh, my group made a uh, slip mask like this so they could uh, view the spectra of a large portion of the sky at once. Um, and here is the kind of raw data out. So all these little uh, black dots are um, emission lines they found. And then once you find one, you still you have to verify uh, that it is indeed a galaxy. And there are kind of uh, two ways you can do that. You can look at the uh, spectrum more carefully, go back and look at it more carefully, and see if it fits the profile of uh, what the line we want from our galaxy uh, looks like. Um, they actually found some other closer galaxies, and that's what uh, my partner Joey Wong's project is about. And so. Um, and then the other way is you can look at uh, imaging of the area, and if the galaxy is resolved, uh, you can identify it uh, because it cuts off a short word of a certain wavelength. And this is where the ionizing radiation is absorbed by neutral hydrogen. All right, so what's my job? My job specifically is to uh, measure a uh, parameter known as beta. And what beta does is it indirectly uh, tells us how much ionizing radiation these galaxies are uh, putting off, how much is escaping from their uh, interstellar media. And so here if we graph uh, luminosity versus wavelength on a log scale, beta is just the slope of the uh, kind of continuum profile here uh, right before this cutoff where, um, where I said before that we have can no longer see the uh, radiation. And so as you can see here, the uh, steeper the slope of beta, the more ionizing uh, radiation is put, uh, put out uh, after the power. All right, so the first approach that I tried uh, to uh, measure beta is to, I uh, looked for 
our sample of galaxies and uh, previously existing uh, in, uh, image catalogs. So because uh, when uh, astronomers like to use the same patches of sky over and over again, just because there's lots of uh, legacy data already. Um, but unfortunately, all our galaxies were too faint uh, to be definitely identified. And so now I have uh, moved on to uh, looking back at those spectra, which we originally analyzed to determine uh, that our galaxies uh, were indeed the galaxies we wanted to look at. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking uh, at the, at the I'm, I'm looking at the noise in those spectra and seeing if I can uh, kind of pick an average and uh, get an av look, see an average continua from our galaxy. So each each individual spectra doesn't have any continua visible, but if you uh, take an average, sometimes you can see kind of a trend, and from that we can measure beta. Fortunately, uh, I haven't done this yet. I'm doing this very soon, but. Uh, kind of the first step to do it is um, you take these uh, lines and you have to get them into the same uh, rest frame. Uh, to do that, you uh, kind of fit them. This is just a uh, example fit. Um, the, pr uh, the profile I'm going to fit uh, with uh, is uh, later will be different. But um, you want to find where the center of the line is because this will tell you the redshift. And the redshift is also related to the actual uh, resolution of the lines. You have to change the resolution, get all your lines into the same uh, rest frame before you can stack and then measure beta. Uh, you might see some of these things off here. These are just um, kind of remnants of skylines that were uh, subtracted from the spectrum. All right, so once we do get beta, what it will mean? Well, basically, it uh, will be used as a constraint for cosmologists who want to create models of uh, dynamics from the uh, reionization. Um, so, beta is controlled by uh, is controlled by a few uh, factors: uh, age, metallicity, uh, and dust. So, the younger, the less metals, and for an astronomer, so you know, uh, metals is anything that's healing. Um, or, as, as you don't know, a couple bit. And then uh, dust from nebula. So the, kind of the uh, most important part of uh, what we wanted, uh, what we're thinking about most is the uh, nebula, the nebula uh, contribution to these continua. Um, and so, and so, um, so, as you can see here, even if you have, uh, this is a, uh, uh, figure from a different paper, which claimed to have measured very blue beta, but has since been disputed. Um, but they made this graph, which uh, shows that even if you have kind of a uh, very low metallicity and young galaxy, um, the nebular contribution will still cause beta to not reach uh, kind of a very blue uh, value, or very steep, we call it steeper value of beta. Or blue. Um, and so what that means, what, uh, what they argue, is that there has to be some sort of uh, mechanism by which the nebula are escaping from the galaxies, uh, allowing the ionizing radiation to uh, get out and causing what we view here. So, uh, so uh, hopefully after we measure this, we can then, uh, it'll be kind of a, uh, something that a lot of people will want to look at and try to interpret. Right. And so I'd like to thank, uh, my uh, advisor, Crystal Martin, my mentor, Elena Henry, uh, Eric Lubin, who uh, runs the UC Leeds program, uh, and then UCSB, and then uh, National Science Foundation, David and the Seal Packer Foundation, and NASA for funding my research group.